the afternoon, we'll start a series, The Believer's Voice of Victory. Hallelujah. What is the believer's voice of victory? Uh, there's such a thing as the believer's victory, but what is the voice? But before we do that, we'll just again reiterate our emphasis on the local assembly. In the first service, I did share that um, to be a committed member, it's good we are in the New Year feeling, which is supposed to end tomorrow. <laughs> and you're January is a very long month. <laughs> you go, ah, when is January going to end? It won't end so quick. Because probably got our salaries before Christmas. So it's a long Christmas. On the 12th day of Christmas. On the 30th day of Christmas. Anyway, um, what a time to make a fresh commitment to be a good member of a local assembly. And I said in the first service, that to be a member of the local assembly is to be a disciple of Christ. And church membership is not a tag. It's not a label. It's not just an obligation every Sunday you show up and then that's all to it. There's more that you do outside the services uh, for the service than just what you do inside it. And one of them we've men mentioned in the first service is evangelism. Evangelism is not the task given to some special people in the body of Christ. No, it's not. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Then verse 18 says, All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He said he has given to us the ministry. So if you are in Christ, you have a ministry. So I have a ministry. And the new creation is just by anybody. The moment you are born again, you are in the new creation in Christ. You have a ministry. Verse 19 says, To which God was in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Then it says he has given unto us the message of reconciliation. So, you have a ministry and you also have a message. You are given a message to go into the world and preach the gospel to everyone. And it mustn't be circumstantial. You know, maybe you are in the plane or you're in the bus or you're in the taxi, or maybe Uber or you're on the road and you just meet someone and a conversation took place. And that can happen. But you see, that should not be the norm. The norm should be you would deliberately take time like this evening, like tomorrow evening. And they say, after work, I would set out two hours on Wednesday. I'll set out one hour on Friday and I'll go to places and I'll share the love of Jesus with them by preaching. I'm not asking you to share food, even though it's good to share food. It's the love of God through the message of Jesus. Now make that intentional. And I said this in the first service, if you look around this auditorium now, and you can't find one single person who is in Christ today because of you then there's something wrong with your Christian walk. Then your conduct as a believer doesn't glorify God. You see, evangelism is not a, a hobby, something you do by the side. It's an instruction. Like I said in the first service, in Matthew 28, 19, it says, making disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then verse 20 says, teaching them to observe what things whoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you to the end of the age. Jesus commanded them to go everywhere and preach. So we must receive that same commandment. It is not an option. It's not a suggestion. It's an instruction. So if you are going to be a true member of a local assembly and a committed one, you must be dedicated intentionally to preaching the gospel. Say, I'm intentional. Say it again. I'm intentional in preaching the gospel to others. Now, alongside that, you know, in a local assembly like this, that should bind us together. It should bind us. The common vision of a local assembly should bind us together. When you see any brother or any sister who is doing something contrary to what we all set out to do, maybe he just chooses not to preach. I, I, well, I know we pray, but I, I'm, for now, I don't want to pray. You know, they play a role that maybe they are not even conscious of. I'll give you an illustration. I was watching the uh, four by hundred meters relay race by Usain Bolt and there was another Jamaican guy and when they broke the record. 
And I began to imagine, uh, you know, there were four. Houston Bolt was the fastest man in the world then. I think he's still the fastest. His record is still unbroken, just like Ronaldo's record. What's the point? So he, he was a last leg. Now, no matter how fast he runs, imagine if the second guy drops the ball or drops a bit. Imagine the second guy crosses his lane. Or the worst of it is that they've gotten the gold medal, then a few years after they do a drug test and find out the guy who was second leg actually was on drugs. And they now take the world record and give it to Chelsea. Sorry, I give it to. That had to come out somehow. <laughs> It had to just come out. That's the word of the Lord. I give it to the second. You know, it can be very, very painful. In a local church, you are like a team. See your role as important. Very important. Such that you mustn't drop the ball or the button anywhere you are. You represent a local assembly of believers. You must ensure that you're not bringing division of whatever way. Whatever way. Like I love to say to you, Whatever you are doing, would you love it to be reproduced? If everyone is just like you, you don't reach out to anybody, nobody's born again during the week, nobody hears the gospel, then we replicate that in the local assembly. How do you think the church will be? Do you think anybody will be here at all? Imagine if no one comes to pray, just like you don't come to pray. How would you think the local church will look like? Imagine if every member of the local church goes on social media and begins to write anything about the Bible, about the church, anywhere. Imagine how the local church will look like. Imagine if everybody was just like you and they want to dress the way you're dressed. You don't care whether anybody's going to see what you're wearing and maybe, you know, start to dress in an ungodly way. Uh, you don't care. You just say, well, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. No, no, no. You, you are actually dropping the basket. And you are dropping the ball. And that could affect others, which means you become a clog in the wheel. Others are laboring night and day to get things done. You decided to create division because you want to be selfish. See, when you come into Christ Jesus, selfishness becomes your enemy. And I've always said it over the years, that the local assembly does two things for us. Number one, it takes us away from selfishness. It destroys selfishness, which means you can't plan the week without thinking about others. You can't even plan a home without thinking about some brethren. You can't plan your finances without thinking about others. You can't plan your time without thinking about others. Secondly, the local assembly destroys pride, which means that you will also see yourself as one who needs the help of others. That's why we have the local assembly. So pride and selfishness are destroyed when you are committed in a local church. What am I saying in essence? Make sure that your conduct and your disposition outside the church and even within the church does not distract others. Or like the relay race, you drop the baton and all the efforts of others go to nothing. Make sure you're a true ambassador of what is being taught in your church. You carry it out everywhere. Don't think about yourself alone. Think about others who labor night and day to ensure that the gospel is preached to others and is established in the hearts of men. See, I give myself to an unselfish commitment to the gospel. I evangelize. I make disciples. I get men to be filled with the Holy Ghost and I comport myself as a true servant of Christ, a disciple of Jesus and a member of this local assembly. Hallelujah.